April 14th, 1912, 9.30am. The RMS Titanic was on a madam voyage to New York with about 2,435 passengers on board, with many wanting to start new lives. There were the rich in the first class, having a ball and enjoying the scenery. The wealthy in the second class had an extraordinary view of the ship, and the third class, which had immigrants from Europe and Ireland, not having been in the biggest place that they've stayed on, but they managed to make themselves comfortable. But what none of them knew was this voyage would be their last. Doctor Who, All Aboard the Titanic, written and read by Isaac Travis. A police box, similar to those that you would see in England 1950, appeared at the end of a corridor, making the most awful yet beautiful sound. The door opened, and out walked a man, a man with a ridiculous taste of fashion, as he was wearing his pyjamas. It was the Doctor. Come on, Lucas, said the Doctor. You're the only one to come here. Just a second, said Lucas. Okay then, take your time. Not too long after, Lucas stepped out wearing a tuxedo. Why the heck are you wearing that? The Doctor asked looking very confused. I don't know, said Lucas. I just don't think it would be very appropriate for wearing my 21st century clothes in 1912. Oh yeah, fair point. The Doctor and Lucas started walking down the ship. After a while, they bumped into someone. It was First Officer William Murdoch, who was on his tea break. He asked the two, What on earth are you doing on the bridge? This is for staff members only. We've only just arrived. I'm the Doctor, and this is Lucas. The Doctor said to him politely. Murdoch asked the Doctor why he was in pyjamas. The Doctor told him that he just found them comfortable, so Murdoch just shrugged it off. Murdoch politely asked the Doctor and Lucas to lead the bridge as Murdoch was about to take control of the ship. And whatever you do, don't get into any trouble, said Murdoch as he worked off. The Doctor and Lucas started to make themselves at home. Lucas had a swim in the pool, and the Doctor had a glass of Dr. Pepper. Even though he was wondering who the heck is Dr. Pepper even was. He suggested they should have called it something like Dr. Who. Three hours had passed, and the Doctor realised that they had better get able to get back to the TARDIS before the ship sank. The Doctor called out to Lucas. Lucas, I'm going to move the TARDIS closer to us. Okay shouted Lucas. When the Doctor walked down the same corridor they entered, he couldn't spot the TARDIS anywhere. He knew it was the same corridor because he remembered that it had a painting of Starry Night on the left wall. The Doctor started to panic. He pulled out his sonic screwdriver and started to scan the Artron energy. His sonic started going crazy because it said that there was Artron energy all over the place and at that level of the ship. But it wasn't just everywhere. It was in a line that looked like someone had dropped it as they walked around the ship. Meanwhile on the bridge, Captain Edward Stewart and Murdoch were keeping an eye on the icebergs in the ocean. I hope we make it to New York, said Murdoch. Suddenly the door opened, and the two men were both knocked out by a man in an Edwardian clothes. He had a mustache with a strange device on his wrist. His name was Matthew Hurt, a time-travelling criminal from the future. He grabbed the wheel of the ship and moved it off course. He saw an iceberg up ahead and started heading towards it. The next minute, the ship had crashed into the iceberg. 
Matthew had an evil smile on his face and started laughing like a maniac. At that same time, the doctor heard a screeching noise. It started. The ship's going down, said the doctor, as he knew what was about to happen. I must find Lucas and get out of here. The doctor started running through the corridors of the first class cabins. The water from the sea was filling up the engine room and almost filling up the cabins. Lucas was on the other side, almost about to drown. Doctor! It's too flooded! yelled Lucas, trying to find a way to reach the doctor. Don't worry, Lucas! yelled the doctor. Meet me on the other side! Lucas made his way to the deck, looking for the doctor. He was in a massive crowd filled with the many men, women and little children making their way to the lifeboats. Lucas started running, looking for the doctor, when he bumped into Matthew, who said, Excuse me, young man. Is your name Lucas Slayer? How do you know me? Lucas replied, as he was very confused and scared. I know where the doctor is. Follow me, said Matthew. Matthew took Lucas into one of the cabins in the third class and pulls a gun at him. Please, don't kill me, Lucas said, horrified for his life. You and your doctor friend have probably noticed my plan is to kill every single innocent life on this ship. You'll probably send me to the police so you can arrest me. But not only am I changing history, but I will make sure that anyone who tries to expose me won't be killing me. The doctor rushed into the cabin. Let him go now, the doctor yelled, trying to find a way to save his companion. Well, isn't it the man himself? You've come here to stop me, haven't you? You don't need Lucas, so let him go. I can't do that! You know too much! The doctor punched Matthew in the face. Who are you really? Asked the doctor very angrily. You see, responded Matthew, I'm a criminal from the future. In my time, the human race has discovered time travel and started to meddle around with time. I was ordered to make sure that the Titanic never sank. Why the heck did, did you purposely drive the Titanic into an iceberg then? Through all my years of being a time criminal, someone once told me that you can't rewrite history, but you can learn from it. Suddenly, the ship split into two and the front deck sank into the ocean. Matthew was on, on the side of the ship. It split right in front of their very eyes. The Doctor and Lucas watched as Matthew fell and drowned, never to be seen again. Run! Yelled the Doctor as he grabbed Lucas. They both ran through the sinking ship, trying not to get hit by any heavy falling objects around them. How can we get out of this ship? Asked Lucas. Are we going to die? Don't worry Lucas, I think I might have a way to get us out of here. The doctor reached into his pocket in a hurry. He grabbed the TARDIS key and took it out. The TARDIS key started to glow as it slowly materialized around them. Inside the TARDIS, the Doctor rushed to the console, pulling the lever to get them out. The Doctor turned on the scanner. The Doctor and Lucas have a clear view of the ship sinking down into the bottom of the ocean. It's gone, said Lucas. Yeah, I know, replied the Doctor. There was nothing that we could have done to save the people on that ship. Some made it to New York, others died. But what happened today will inspire many great people. Like M M Matthew said, you can't change time, but you, you can learn from it and improve in the future.